Stick with me. We're going to talk about what is meat glue, is it safe to eat, and what's the deal? Can you eat it if you're gluten intolerant or not? We're going to get to the bottom of all this. Hi, my name is Dr. Taryn Lupo, and if you've never been to my channel before, I make how-to videos and educational videos that help you lead a more positive life. Today is going to be an educational video that will hopefully help you with some health questions. What is meat glue? And you've probably heard of meat glue a few years back. A lot of videos went viral about it and there was a lot of talk. But it sprung up again about, a, uh, I would say about six months ago. It started going crazy in the news again about people gluten allergies. Can they eat this or is it gluten free? Is it not? We're going to get into all that. But first, let's talk about what meat glue is. Now, um, it looks like a white powder. And when these companies process it, they actually process it down to an enzyme called transglutaminase. Now, the uh, transglutaminase, what that enzyme does is seal proteins together permanently. It's also involved in uh, clotting. Before we dive deep into this, I need to give credit to where credit is due. The idea for this story came from Kate P's article, and I'm going to link that below. It's a very, very good article. I'm going to recommend you go look at it if you want a lot more details of what I'm going over. Uh, please go check that out. Here's a breakdown of how transglutaminase is made. Um, most of the time it is made out of cows or pig blood and they uh, put a bacteria in that cultivates it. And what will happen is they'll extract this and, and turn it into powder. So they'll get the enzyme out of it. Now they can also use vegetable and plant extracts, but most commonly they just use like leftover blood. And this was a big problem when it first came out because they weren't labeling where the blood came from. Was it cow or where is it pig? Especially like people that eat kosher or won't eat pig there were some problems because they really couldn't identify where it came from. These days, I think they do have kosher versions of it, if I'm not mistaken, but that's probably why you, you first heard about it and a lot of people wouldn't touch the stuff. So once the powder's processed, what you're going to do is you're gonna sprinkle this powder on chunks of leftover meat, and then you mash them together, let it sit for a while, and the, the enzyme will actually fuse the chunks together into one solid piece of meat, and it's really hard to tell. So you can take inferior cuts of a meat and lump them all together into maybe like a, a loin shape and you could pretty much pass it off as, as loin and most people wouldn't know. So there was a big problem with this when it first got going because uh, some places thought it was extremely deceptive. Like in the UK, this stuff's completely banned because they, they feel it's uh, deceptive and they were worried about safety measures. But we'll get into that a little more when we cover is it safe. But let's talk about the, the different kinds there is because they make multiple kinds depending on what you want to fuse together. And here's just kind of a list. You can go to that article and read through them if you want, but they're used for different things. And what you, the takeaway here is there are, a lot of times the companies, especially foreign companies, will add additives to the TG enzyme and that can create problems all of its own. And when you take a look at different kinds, they add different things in. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the, the is it safe area. So how can you tell if you're actually eating something that has been meat glued together? Well, a lot of times you look at the fibers and if the fibers are running different directions and sometimes they'll even have a fusing point like this picture, you can see where the meat's been fused together. That's a pretty good idea. And also you can just use kind of common sense. If you're eating something like a chicken nugget, that stuff's all been usually fused together. Or any sort of meat that you're buying that you're like, wow, this is an amazing price. How did the Dollar Tree get filet mignon? It's probably like scraps glued together. You know, it's... It's usually um, the price should kind of be a, a red, red flag for you. So let's talk about is it dangerous? And there's a couple concerns. Now, some countries have gone outright and banned this stuff, like the UK. Other companies kind of take a halfway stance, like uh, Canada 
what I think in 2014 they started making uh, manufacturers label it because they used to not even label that they would do this and they would just kind of pass it off as premium meat. And then the uh, U.S. is kind of, as far as I can tell, it's sort of in a limbo. They're, they're saying it needs to be labeled these days, but I'm not sure if it's mandatory. But what you'll see if it is labeled is something it will be like enzyme or TG enzyme or TGB enzyme, something like that. It'll have the word enzyme in it. And if it's a meat product with enzyme, you're, you pretty much can deduce that it's going to be some sort of meat glue in there. The big problem, one, was the amount of bacteria contamination. So if you have a piece of meat and the outsides of the meat that touch the air have a much higher bacteria concentration, you know, they float in and bacteria sticks to the outside. So if you dice up a piece of meat and you have all of those external surfaces that now have hit the air and then you roll them back up and glue them together, what will happen is that those outside external pieces that had a lot more contact with, berry, uh, with bacteria are now on the inside. So you've made outside meat inside meat. And it dramatically uh, raises the bacterial contamination level. So sometimes when you don't cook your meat properly, this stuff's much, much higher in a bacteria count and can make you sick. And uh, it's estimated... Uh, in the article, microbiologist Glenn uh, Panier says the amount of bacteria on a steak that's been put together with meat glue is hundreds of times higher. So they had a problem with people with food uh, poisoning and, and illnesses that just didn't cook it well. So if you're going to eat anything that you think is going to be meat glued, cook it really good. You know, it, make sure it's well done. Um, also, there has been been questions about if it can uh, cause inflammation and inflammatory responses and problems uh, with uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington disease. There's a uh, study that's linked in that, uh, that uh, article that talks about that because what happens is most people can properly regulate the TG enzyme, but if you have a deficiency that doesn't let you regulate it well and you're and you're increasing your, your intake of it, sometimes that can cause problems according to that study. So, uh, basically, I mean, I, I use common sense with this. The, the enzyme is there to fuse meat and clot. So if I'm eating things that clot and cause clotting, do you think it could have an effect on me? And maybe, you know, blood clots or clotting problems. I don't know. I haven't seen any research saying, you know, yes, this is the case. Because, you know, when something hits in your gut, you pretty much break it down to all of its materials. But if you have leaky gut or problems, uh, some of those materials don't break down right and they go right in your bloodstream. And this is, this is a problem here. Because there's a lot of confusion about uh, the, what you're seeing in the news lately is about, is this stuff gluten-free or not? And... People with true celiac disease get a, a test, a tissue test, an IgA test that, that is a transglutaminase test. Now, what happens is if you have a wheat allergy, it can attack these enzymes, um, the, the way you make these enzymes, antibodies can attack it, and it causes all kinds of, like, that celiac reaction. And if you don't have celiac, if you have, like, a leaky gut and you're just gluten-sensitive, you can react to the binders in this stuff because sometimes they're made with wheat. Sometimes they're made with milk. Um, a, most people who are gluten intolerant have leaky gut, which means they're also going to be dairy intolerant. And they'll, um, they're not going to, they're going to have kind of the same reaction they get when they eat dairy because they, they have a leaky gut. So it's, it's more of if you have a damaged system, you can cause a lot of problems. The actual enzyme uh, even though gluten's in the name, does not actually have uh, the gluten particle that, that sets everybody off. What it does, though, is it has um, the potential to, I think, if you have a damaged gut, get into your blood and, and cause problems. Because people will swear up and down, you know, they ate the meat glue and now 
their sensitivities are set off or their allergies are set off. And I could see that if you have a, a damaged gut lining already, which if you have an, uh, an autoimmune reaction, you probably do have damaged gut lining anyway. It's, uh, I've never had one patient that didn't have leaky gut that had some sort of autoimmune disease. So that, that is a problem. Uh, and I would take it serious. I wouldn't touch this stuff if you have food sensitivities because I feel like it's just asking for trouble. I, I, I can't find any studies. So, you know, if you ask the government, this stuff is safe. The U.S. government says it is safe to eat. And so, but the U.S. government also says things like aspartame is safe to eat and uh, lots of products that have been pulled off the shelves years down the road that were once safe or not safe. So, I, you know, I wouldn't trust the government at all with my health. I'm sorry, because uh, that's all they do is say, oops, our fault. Something got through. My bad. Sorry you have cancer. You know, it's it's not, not something I would... Uh, you can't trust the government to take care of you. So you have to uh, use some common sense. That being said is... Would I eat it? No, because if you're trying to avoid inflammation, you know, if you go look at like the China study by T. Colin Campbell, uh, one of the biggest problems, uh, one of the biggest, uh, I should say, uh, reasons you get con cancer, some cancers, is eating meat. So if you're eating less than fear your meat that's been like glued together, I, uh, to me, that's like processed food. I, I wouldn't eat it but I don't eat meat so no there you go I don't trust that stuff so I I mean that's the easiest way if you're going to continue to eat meat what I would do is just only buy it from you know the farmer's market where you know the person and you know where it came from and you know they're not just trying to cram a bunch of inferior meat into uh and sell it to you you know someone you trust buy by quality meat uh but obviously the easiest answer is to stop eating meat and adopt a, a plant-based diet and that's the safest way to go and uh the least inflammatory too but a word to warning to vegetarians and some vegans out there they were using uh tg enzymes in some tofu products and some dairy products so you're if you're concerned uh i i would be on the lookout and just check the labels the best you can so remember, you are what you eat. So you might want to stay away from that processed meat stuff. Anyway, if you like what you heard and you want to support the channel, please check out my Amazon link below. I really appreciate if you go through Amazon before you start shopping. It really does help our channel. Also, check out these other videos, right? That's that, this way. There you go. <laughs> those videos over there. Check those out, and I hope you'll keep checking out my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by.